Yo, what's up? I'm in Dubai right now and I'm exploring this amazing city in the middle of winter in Poland. And right now there are like 30 degrees. It's absolutely amazing. And I was thinking like, what can I give you, right? To help you go from where you are to be able to work and travel from anywhere in the world because coding did that for me, okay? I was a barista, I was stuck and I wanted to change my life dramatically. And I've learned programming, I've learned coding, I learned front-end development, JavaScript, React, all that good stuff. And because of that, I've managed to kind of free myself, okay? I'm not anymore bound to a specific location. I have skills and I can be anywhere in the world as long as I have some internet connection, okay? And luckily in hotels, you do have that and in Airbnbs and all that good stuff, okay? In this video, I want to give you my top tips that will help you become a remote developer, okay? So let's get started. We need to start with your mindset, with your mind. As, as much as you think that, okay, web development, coding, software development is just about skills, your mindset is gonna help you get those skills, okay? Your mindset is gonna help you put in the work when you don't feel like it, okay? And the first thing I wanna talk about here when it comes to mindset is that you need to have long-term goals. You need to have like tangible goals that you have set for yourself, right? You cannot just want to become a developer for the sake of becoming a developer. For example, for myself, I wanted to become a developer because I wanted to be free, okay? Uh, location-wise and time-wise as well. I wanted that for myself. I wanted to be able to live on an island if I wanted to, okay? I had these tangible goals. For you, might be uh, I can put my kids through university, through I can give them a better education. I can get a mortgage and whatnot. I can afford better clothes. I can afford, you know, a better lifestyle. I can invest my money into something. I can buy a better car. Whatever that might be, you need to attach coding to that, okay? Because if you don't have like a tangible specific goal, especially, then you will give up when things will become difficult because things will become difficult, okay? And that's why you need to think long term, okay? Next, you are sitting on a bag of cash, like literally. It might sound weird to you, but you are sitting on a bag of cash. Like the more skilled you become, the more dangerous you become. I heard this quote from someone on Twitter and probably that guy heard it from someone else, but you become dangerous if you have skills. Skills are those things that nobody can take from you. If you have a wife and she divorces of you, she cannot take your skills. Government cannot take your skills. You can lose everything you have, but if you have skills, then you can make your money back, right? So use your brain and understand that this is the most powerful asset that you have your brain and the way you are seeing the world and how you are navigating this um, this new challenge that is in front of you okay this helped me a lot when i was learning code i was thinking fuck if i can just master my brain if i keep doing the work this brain is gonna print money okay and it's true and then the next thing is that you need to use your pain to motivate you there are two types of motivators for people one is the motivator of gain. I'm gonna get X, Y, Z, as we discussed here. I'm gonna get the mortgage, I'm gonna get the, the car, I'm gonna get the holidays. But the real motivator, okay, the real motivator is pain. For example, staying stuck in a job you hate for the next 20 years, right? That's a big, big, big motivator. And some people wake up after five, 10 years. They realize, damn, I'm gonna end up like Jimmy which is 50 and has back pain. I'm gonna end up like this guy. Or you realize like you cannot grow anymore. You can like make more money from your current career. Or you realize that you actually need to get two jobs right now to keep up with the inflation. Or you realize I haven't been in a holiday for like three, four years. Or you realize like all your friends moved on, they have their families and then you are still there derping around. Any kind of pain that you can master okay that will make you move you have to use it okay if you manage to put yourself with the back against the wall you will absolutely make a shit ton of damage okay one of the main things that people say is like oh i have uh nothing to work on i have nothing to do well in reality you have nothing to lose right so if you think about it 
And if you feel like I don't have anything to do, I have not, no purpose, let's say, with your life, that's the moment when you actually have to double down because you have nothing to lose and everything to gain, okay? Now, as a programmer, you need a few skills, okay? I'm not gonna talk about the coding skills just now, which are like specific things like, hey, you need to learn JavaScript arrays and all that bullshit. Not, not now, okay? You need to learn how to solve problems. You need to understand that you, as a software developer, you are paid to solve problems. You are just using code to do so. But you have to first solve the problem in your head. Like someone is going to tell you, I need this. Your brain is going to start computing whatever the request was from that human. And then you go on and write the code. It's not the other way around. You cannot write code if you don't have a problem. You need a problem, you need to solve it, then you write the code. That's how you do this thing, okay? Then you need to be a team player. Coders are not working by themselves. No matter what you're seeing in the movies or whatever your favorite influencer says to you, you need to become a team player. You cannot be a good software developer if you're a lone wolf. You need to be able to speak with people. You need to be able to be charismatic. You can teach yourself how to do that. You need to learn how to sell yourself in the interviews. You need to know how to use Git and Jira and all this stuff, you know, that uh, a software developer actually uses all the time when he's or she's working with a team. And you also need to be able to write code. And when it comes to writing code, there's no better way to learn than by um, actually writing code. You cannot avoid this. You have to write code from day one. There is no such thing as delay. I'm gonna start reading right now and I'm gonna watch tutorials and I'm gonna go through a few courses, then I'm gonna start coding. No, it doesn't work like that. You are thinking about starting code today. Today you are writing code, your first line of code. And you have to experiment, you have to destroy things, you have to break things, you need to be okay and comfortable with writing code. You have to write so much code that your fingers are bleeding, okay? Very, very important. And also later, you need to get good at writing good code, okay? Like if you wanna be a monkey coder, okay, so writing spaghetti code, fair enough but you won't get hired you need to learn how to write good code and you need to learn about something called dry and kiss don't repeat yourself and keep it simple stupid okay these two principles are the only two principles that i kind of follow as a programmer and when i'm teaching my clients don't repeat yourself and keep it simple okay if you manage to do both of these principles if you do these two principles keep it simple and don't repeat yourself you'll be good to go now what to learn in terms of like tech html and css no frameworks no bootstrap no tailwind no material ui none of that stuff you i'm not giving you permission okay i'm not giving you permission to use libraries and frameworks for css you have to teach yourself to write vanilla css get good at that then once you get hired once you get a job and your employer forces you to learn a specific framework go ahead and learn it it's going to take you one day to learn that thing I'm telling you, someone is going to pay way more for your skills if you are good at vanilla CSS than if you just know frameworks and you are really bad at vanilla HTML and CSS. Or like, yeah, that's... Anyway, JavaScript. You need to know JavaScript. That's very self-explanatory. React, which is a JavaScript library. So with JavaScript, what we do is we are allowing the user to interact with the web page and then we are able to respond to the user whenever the user does something so for example if i move throughout this presentation using my keyboard then i'm showing different slides okay i'm using javascript for that whenever you click on a button and you show up a model or something like that that's javascript javascript is powering the internet and there are libraries such as react which are making your life as a javascript developer way way easier you cannot get a job only with html css and javascript it's impossible i mean not impossible i'm sure there are but those jobs are not going to pay you six figures or more okay they will pay you very very little money but you cannot learn react if you're not very good at javascript in my opinion though you can skip ahead and try to learn react but then you'll be stuck if you are learning react right now and if you feel 
like you don't really get it is because your JavaScript foundation is very weak. That's the easy answer. Then Redux or some state management. I'm not going to explain to you what Redux is because it's quite complicated if you're a complete beginner. But as you are going through this framework of technologies, you will start to need JavaScript. Why? You've built a few websites and now you're like, okay, what next? Well, I want to add some interaction. Okay, so I'm going to learn some JavaScript. Okay, now I've created a few simple things, but how do I make like complex apps? Oh, I'm learning React. Okay, I'm, I'm creating a few React apps, but what's next? Because these apps are very small and simple. Well, you add Redux. And then you keep adding stuff as you're building. Don't learn technologies. Create stuff and then learn technologies to solve your problems. That's how it should work. In my opinion, at least. Okay, so your main goal right now is to start coding day one as we already discussed. No delays, no wait times, no waiting for the right moment, no waiting for finishing your last course. Start coding. Start making stuff as fast as possible. Build as much as possible. Your 90% of your time that you have allocated towards coding should be spent creating stuff. If you are doing it the other way around, where you are studying 90% of the time, you are doing it wrong, okay? You are supposed to struggle and to suck quite a lot, trust me. And you cannot avoid that. You cannot avoid the pain of growth. It's impossible. Then a trick is to be accountable, not to yourself, but towards someone else. So, you know, when you promise something to yourself, you kind of feel like, okay, I feel tired today and I'm not going to do it. But if you promise someone else like, hey, I'm going to be there at that time. For some reason, we are always going to do whatever we promised. Otherwise, we feel like we've betrayed someone else. Okay. And in order to overcome this problem, which is holding yourself accountable, you can hold or you can be held accountable by someone else. So what I do with my students is, Every day I message them, hey, what's up? Tell me what's up. What have you done? What are you working on? I'm doing this because they feel the need to tell me something, of course. But then every day they think, fuck, if I don't do anything, this motherfucker is going to ask me. And if I say I haven't done anything, they'll feel bad. So they do it, right? So that's how I hold them accountable. In your case, if you are doing this by yourself, find a friend and give your friend a card okay a physical card like a bank card i was about to show you but uh give your friend a bank card okay and every day if you fail to work on something if you fail to show something to your friend your friend is allowed to buy something with your card in this way you will be held accountable by someone you will feel the pain of losing something if you don't do the work. And trust me, if you start doing the work, okay, you'll start getting the benefits of being a developer. Okay, so that's kind of the video for today. And a quick reminder, as long as you're not giving up, you're winning. Peace.